destroyed 
Aston Villa in the process as well, so he, he can do it against Premier League defences as well, and he's a proper traditional number nine. He's six foot tall and very, very clinical in front of goal. He would suit the West Ham system very well, and even though he's 31, he would be a sensible short-term fix to their striker problem. Maybe if they can't get their long-term targets, go and get him as a short-term guy because he was truly sensational for Olympiacos. Ipswich, Morgan Whitaker. Ipswich have been targeting a winger this window and pushed very hard for Jaden Philogene, but unfortunately missing out to him on Aston Villa. So they're going to need to go and look for another winger and I think they should stick to the championship again and get a player who was actually better than Philogene last year. That's Morgan Whitaker. Whitaker quite literally dragged Plymouth away from relegation from the championship with 19 goals and 8 assists enough to keep Plymouth up last season. The fact he did that in such a poor side suggests he's a really good player and he was actually the fourth top scorer in the championship last season. He can score, but he can also create chances with his eight assists showing that. And he's still just 23 years old. He's very, very, very versatile. He can play on either wing or through the middle. He's also going to be very good in case Ipswich go down, as they know they have a proven bagsman in the championship. But I think he can also help them massively in the Premier League. And this is a deal they should try and get done, because it wouldn't also cost them too much. It'd probably be around the same price as Village. Everton, Morton, Frenklup. Everton have done some decent business already this summer, but a new midfielder will be required, as they have lost Amadou Onana. One player who has a name maybe quite a lot of you haven't heard of, but I think probably will very, very soon, is Morton Frenklup. This guy is literally the definition of a defensive midfielder. Glenlub is a destructive force of nature, the kind that any coach would love in his side. He has won more tackles than any other player in Serie A last season, while across Europe's top five leagues, only Joao Bolinha averaged more tackles and interceptions per 90 than him, which is super impressive. He's still only 22, playing for Genoa, and is just a defensive monster, which is perfect absolutely perfect for a Sean Dyche Everton side. He would thrive under Dyche being that destructive DM. I could imagine under Dyche he would get like 15 tackles a game. He could easily slot into that system. I think he's ready for Premier League football as well, so Everton should definitely make this happen. Brentford, Alfie Doherty. Brentford want to be busy in the market up a new left back, both centre backs, a central midfielder and a winger. They've already signed a new a striker, so let's focus on the left back role then. Rico Henry and Aaron Hickey can play there, but both suffered with injuries last season. And also Sergi Regulon has now returned to Spurs after his low. So Alfie Doherty is the perfect signing for Brentford. Doherty was arguably Luton's best player last season. The 24-year-old played a pivotal role for them, racking up an impressive 8 assists and scoring once in 36 games last year. He proved he's more than capable of being a Premier League player, and in particular as a left wing back, is very, very good going forward with his crossing. Brentford fluctuate between a back 4 and a back 5, meaning Doherty can be such a useful attacking weapon for Brentford when they play that back five as a wing back. So this really feels like a no-brainer in my opinion. Spurs. Edison. Before you say Edison, they have the car, why would they need him? It is not the one you're thinking about. I'm talking about the other Brazilian Edison. This time from Atlanta. If you watch for your own belief this season, you probably would have been exposed to this guy, as seen just how incredible he is. Along
alongside Coop Miners in the midfield, Edison has been sensational for Atalanta and is just the complete midfielder. He's so good at winning the ball back, but in particular it's his ability to glide with the ball after winning it back and progress his team up the pitch. It actually reminds me a lot of Mateo Kovacic. He's still only 23 as well, so he can develop into a potentially world-class midfielder. And Spurs, for me, need somebody who can play in that number 8 or DM role. As, you know, Basuma started well last season, but he started tailing off and they could use somebody else in that midfield role. Emerson can do that. Would be a great signing for me, but it's just a bit contingent on the first suggestion of a video with Coop Miners. It's highly unlikely Atalanta sell both their midfielders, so only one of them will leave. So Spurs would have to move fast and sign Edison before anybody signed Coop Miners. But it's a move they should make if they have top four ambitions this season. Wolves. Facundo Medina. Wolves have some money to reinvest after obtaining 40 mil from West Ham for Max Gilman. And getting a replacement for him is priority. Now shout out to Matthew, my Wolves fan, for this suggestion. As he's gone for Facundo Medina. Which, looking into it, would be an unreal signing. Wolves need a left-sided centre-back. And importantly, with the way they play, somebody's good on the ball for build-up. Medina, playing for Lawrence in Liga, is the epitome of a modern-day ball-playing centre-back. With some of the highest progressive carry and passing numbers among centre-backs in Europe. Medina, boys for technical of a central midfielder, allowing him to slot into a number of positions, such as left back, and having somebody like this in Wolves' team would be such a useful weapon. Now this could be a hard one to do, as he did sign a new contract fairly recently, but that was more so to preserve his value. And with the money they got from Gilman, Wolves could make an offer that Lawrence couldn't refuse to turn down and lure Medina. Next up we have Brighton, and we have Ricardo Rios. Brighton have been very active in the window so far, signing four players, including Jakob Minter, Mats Viva and two youngsters. Mats Viva is a great addition in the midfield, but they still want another central midfielder with Pascal Gross potentially leaving, and also Billy Gilmore attracting interest. So, a central midfielder for me, who is the most Brighton signing ever, is Richard Leos. Colombia were a surprise package at the Copa America this summer as they reached the final. A one player who caught the eye was Rios. He was a real breakout star. The 24-year-old plays for Palmeiras in the Brazilian league and is destined for a move to Europe off the back of his performances at the Copa America. The central midfielder is a dribbling machine completing more dribbles than any other player at the Copa America. And while some big European clubs are looking at him, Brighton certainly have the ball to sign him, given their successes in the South American market in the past. Rios could be another Brighton success story, and it would be a sensible move for him personally to make that step into Europe. Newcastle Rafinha. Okay, this is very, very punchy, but hear me out. Newcastle desperately need a new right winger. Amaron is not good enough, and they know this. They, they pushed for Elise and Alanga already this window, but were unsuccessful with both. One player who would be sensational for them, who maybe could become available, is Rafinha. Now, Rafinha. He's a great player and actually performed pretty well for Barcelona last season as a regular starter. However, Yamal, of course, will be starting right winger next season for Barcelona and they are also pushing very, very hard to sign Nico Williams. The only way they can get Williams, though, is if they sell somebody. So Rafinha might be that player and if Nico Williams comes in, well, Rafinha's not going to be a starter anymore anyway. So, if I'm Newcastle, I'm throwing my name into that hat. 
Rafinha is a really, really good player and has also proven he can perform in the Premier League before with Leeds. So if Newcastle can get him, which is a big if, they should definitely try to make it happen at least. You know, just pull in the bid and see what happens. See if he, Barcelona will probably accept a bid of around 40 to 50 million for Rafinha. And if you can tempt him, you know, give him a decent wage, they de definitely have some pulling power. I think they should make it happen. I mean, imagine him and Isak together and caught on the left. Oh, that, would, that would absolutely cook as a front three. Chelsea. Ivan Tony. Right, so picking one for Chelsea is very hard. As we've signed so many players, I honestly feel at this point we should sign nobody. But I've got to pick somebody. So personally, the position of need is another striker. It doesn't have to be a starting striker, as Jackson was pretty good last season, just inconsistent, and needed somebody who could rotate with him when he was going through some rough spells. We also need somebody with a little bit of experience, not too old, though, as our board will never allow that to happen. They can't cost a lot either, or have a huge, huge wages, as again, our board doesn't like that, and we don't really have tons of money to play with. So Ivan Tony, for me, fits all the criteria perfectly. Now, one year ago, Tony would have gone upwards of 60 million, but his stocks are quite low at the moment. He had a decent Euros, but once he returned to Brentford in the second half of last season, he wasn't really the same player. Not many clubs are really interested in, in him right now. He's only got a year left on his deal. Brentford reportedly have dropped their price tag, as they probably have realised this fee only time they can actually get a fee for Ivan Tony. So I think, I reckon we put a bid of around 35 million on the table. Brentford would probably take it. For 35 mil to get a Brent proven striker with a bit of experience is a very different option to Jackson. I don't really see much wrong with this move. The only problem is I don't think it's going to happen, which is sad as our board. You know, I have some weird obsession with signing players under 21. But yeah, that's who I would like us to sign. I just don't think it's going to happen. Next up, we have Southampton. Armando Broya. Southampton have already made some moves this summer in a lot of areas. But one position they are yet to address is a striker. Adam Armstrong was brilliant last season for them. But his strike partner for most of the season was Jay Adams, who has departed the club on a free... He's going to need replacing, and to be honest, they probably would have needed another striker anyways, as Armstrong and Adams haven't really proven themselves in the Brem before, so getting a proven Brem striker is priority. Somebody who literally proved themselves in the Brem with Southampton is Armando Broya. He got 8 goals in the 21-22 season for Southampton and looked really good for them. Now his career in the Brem has taken a downturn since then due to injury, but Broya remains a good player and is available this summer. He's a little bit of a different profile to Adams, he's not as good as the link up players in, but what he is is a good finisher, an aerial presence and somebody who has shown in the past he can score goals in the Brem, so I think Southampton should go ahead and re-sign Broya. Next up we have Arsenal. Santiago Jimenez. A lot of rumours have been around Arsenal this summer, and most people say the boring names like Isaac or Zubamendi were just swirling around. And sure, they're good signings, but I don't really want to be boring and pit those guys. I'm going to go for somebody a bit different. Now, Arsenal have a couple of areas of need. Maybe a new left back, another centre the mid, and the one which everybody banged on about last season, a new striker. Now, I actually don't think the striker situation is as bad as people make out. In my opinion, they just need another option. Not a 100 million big name. Just another option in case Jesus is injured or Havertz is out of form. Santiago Jimenez would be that guy. Currently playing for Feyenoord, the 22-year-old has been electric for them. Scoring 23 goals in 30 games across all competitions last season including a brace in the Champions League. He's super, super clinical in front of goal, which is really encouraging for Arsenal fans as that's been one of their major problems. Now, with 
be a big step up for him and has to come into the Premier League for a team like Arsenal. But I think Jimenez is not a big enough name that people would expect him to, you know, fire Arsenal to the title. I think it's a calculated risk worth taking, as if he's maybe not ready for that step up just yet, that's fine. He's young and can take some time to develop and won't have too much pressure on him as he's not going to cost 100 million, more around 30 to 45. However, the upside is huge as if he can emulate what he's done in the Eredivisie for Arsenal. Suddenly you have a top class striker who could be that difference in winning the title next season. So Arsenal should make this happen. Up next, Bournemouth. Alex Palmer. Bournemouth don't actually need much work to their squad, but maybe a new goalkeeper could be wise as Neto is getting older and was a bit shaky last season. I've identified arguably the best goalkeeper from the championship then, Alex Palmer. West Brom were very tough enough to crack defensively last season, having only conceded 47 goals in 46 games putting them as the third best defence in the league. One of the key reasons as to why they were so t- tough to beat was a form of goalkeeper Alex Palmer in nets. After an impressive loan spot Plymouth, it has perhaps taken Palmer longer to make himself a regular for the Baggies, but he has been sensational after eventually getting his chance and ended the campaign with the championship golden glove with a tally of 18 clean sheets last season and he's still only 27 which is really young for a keeper but he's experienced enough to make that step up from the championship he's a solid enough keeper and really I don't think it's going to cost too much so I think he's a good signing for Bournemouth if they're looking for a bit of an upgrade in goal Manchester City Joshua Kimmich Finding a player for Manchester City is always hard. They don't really need too many players or upgrades in their team. But there are a couple of areas where they maybe do need somebody. That's a backup for Rodri and maybe another right back as Walker begins to age out. By that logic, why not get a player who can kill two birds with a one stone? Joshua Kimmich. He's got just one year left on his contract and Bayern Munich have signed Joao Bellinia, meaning Kimmich's future is looking very uncertain to Bayern. He shouldn't cost too much then, probably around 35 to 45 million, which is a good price for a player who is very good in multiple positions. As a right back, he's class. We saw that in the Champions League last season for Bayern and also at the Euros for Germany. He can play that inverted role very nicely, or overlap as well. He can also play DM, which maybe he's not as good as, but he's still very solid. He's played on the Pep before at Bayern, so Pep and him know each other very well. He can provide that cover for Rodri, and he is an upgrade on Walker, in my opinion, at right back. It's just perfect. I'm not sure if it would actually happen, but it seems like a great fit. Fulham, Reese Nelson. Fulham need quite a few areas, to be honest. A new centre-back to replace Adrabayo, a new DM to replace Bellinia, but they also need a new right winger. Willian and De Cordova Reid have left after their contracts expired, so a new winger is necessary. Somebody I mentioned in my 10 players who need to leave their clubs video. Check it out if you haven't done so already. I'll put the link in the description. Reese Nelson would be perfect. Nelson has struggled for game time at Arsenal now. And this feels like the right time to depart. Nelson is a natural right winger. Who could also play on the left and would add a bit of youth and excitement to that Fulham side on the wings. I think he's more than good enough to start in the Premier League and Fulham should try and make this one happen. Aston Villa, Ferran Torres. Another player I mentioned in my 10 players to sell video. This one is very similar to the Rafinha deal for Newcastle. It's kind of contingent on Barcelona. Might sign Nico Williams. So somebody has to go in that forward line. It's either Ferran or Rafinha. If I'm Villa, I put in a bid for Torres. 
says, and for some to sell him instead of Rafinha. Villa have sold DRB to Saudi. They need a replacement for him. And for me, Ferran Torres is a perfect guy. He can play all across the front three in a similar way to DRB. And can play as that second striker in that 4 4 2 if needed. He would fit into that team perfectly. And of course, he's Spanish, so maybe could work well under Emery. He's played in the Brem before, and is also experienced in the Champs League, which is going to be helpful for Villa next season. He ticks all the boxes, and could be available this summer if he put in a decent bid, so this makes perfect sense for Aston Villa. Manchester United, Yusuf Fafana. United have already made some progress in overturning their squad this summer, but they still need a lot of work, and getting a new DM, DM in is priority. Manuel Garte seems to be number one pick, but the deal is far from being closed, as United and PSG have not yet to agree on a fee. So Fafana, for me, is the better and much cheaper option. Fafana enjoyed an impressive season in Liga last year, scoring four and registering four, as Monaco finished a second. This form earned him a place in Deschamps' Euro 2024 squad and has prompted some interest from some big clubs. He's not going to cost too much either, as he's got just one year left on his deal, so he'll be much cheaper than Agarte. He's a really good player and is still fair young, age 24, which is fitting of this new young core United are trying to build. They have to move fast though as AC Milan are keen on him and close to agreeing a fee. If they let Milan get him, that would be a big, big missed opportunity by United in my opinion. Crystal Palace, Marcus Edwards. Palace were on fire towards the end of last season under Oli Glasner and this season they could be really ambitious with a full year under him they could achieve something big. Glass's attack is need of replenishment though after Elise left to buy Munich. And while Daichi Gamada has joined, another right winger would be necessary. I think Sporting's Marcus Edwards would be perfect. A wide player packed with skill, pace and an eye for goal, Edwards would go a long way to replacing Elise. Edwards started his career at Spurs and progressed through the first team, and big things were expected of him. However, it never really worked out, but he's thrived at Sporting, playing 110 games for them, getting 20 goals in the process, and he was winning the league with them last season. Edwards is a dribbling monster, he's one of the best out there, and would be an ideal replacement, adding some trickery on the wing instead of Elise. Leicester, James McAdee. Leicester is a tricky one, as they've got a new manager in Steve Cooper, so it's really difficult to figure out how he's going to play, and therefore what positions are needed. One thing for sure though, is they need a Kieran Dewsbury or replacement. Now McAdee isn't a direct replacement for Dewsbury Hall, but he is somebody you can play in that number 10 role or on the right, which is another position Leicester are looking at, and he has shown his qualities in the Premier League before. Last season, he was one of the only bright sparks for a dismal Sheffield United team. And I think in a better side, such as Leicester, he could really, really flourish in the Premier League. Now, I don't know if City will actually be willing to let him go, as it appears Pep will give him a chance in pre-season. But he's by no means an untouchable player, and clearly, if you put in a decent bid for him, City will probably sell. At the very least, a loan deal with an option to buy, similar to how Wolves did with Tommy Doyle, would make sense. And I think he could really add a spark to Steve Cooper's Leicester side this season. Okay, and finally, we have Nottingham Forest. Sergio Regulon. This, to me, seems to be the most Nottingham Forest move ever. Regulon's Spurs career started off promising but quickly has gone downhill, and last season he spent half of it on loan to Man United, and the other half on loan at Brentford. Now if you ask United and Brentford fans, 
they would say he actually wasn't that bad and did a solid job for both teams. Regulon, coming forward has always been fairly good, it's just defensively he can be a little bit dodgy. That's why he's much better as a wing back in my opinion and under Nuno at Forest, in the back five, Regulon would be great. Nuno does pretty well with his wing backs and Regulon even played under Nuno at Spurs and when he was there, he absolutely loved him. He started every single game under Nuno as a left wing back, so they clearly got on well and Forrest could do with another wing back. He's very much available and probably for a very small fee, so this deal just makes perfect sense to reunite with Nuno. And as I said, it just seems like such a Nottingham Forest move to make. But there we go. That is one player every Brimley club should sign. Who do you think your club should sign? Get in the comments below. Do you agree or disagree with any of those picks? And if you have enjoyed this video, please.